Good morning. Happy Saturday. Say a quick hello if you're on live. Welcome to those of you watching the replay. Who do we have on live right now? Good morning. Hi, Sally. Hi, Nancy. See you guys hopping in. All right, so as you saw the topic of my quick scope today, hi, Casey. Uh, the topic of my quick scope today is my three most favorite, helpful, useful productivity tips. And, uh, and then I thought I would give you a quick tour of my home office since I've had that request many times. Um, so I'm doing this scope today. Thank you for the love. I'm doing this scope today to answer a question that um, somebody I was mentoring yesterday asked me and she said, you know, to be honest, I don't understand how you do it all, how you're a mom, how you're a business owner. Um, you just seem very happy and accomplished and you get a lot done. And yeah, I do. I feel very good about the what I give out into the world and um, I've had to let go of certain things at times that didn't make sense to me and that's one of the key things you have to do as you're moving forward, right? That's a whole other topic. Um, but you know, one of the biggest challenges people face when they are starting their own business, give me some hearts if you are a business owner. I wanna know how many of you on right now um, may be struggling with this issue. Okay, so whether you're you know, brand new to starting your own business or seasoned, it's something that we all from time to time struggle with, right? Is knowing what to do and when and how to do it efficiently, especially when you have all these other hundreds of things going on. Um, so one of the dip most difficult things is that when you are an entrepreneur and you own your own business, you're the driver, you're it, there's nobody telling you how to do things. You know, there, there might be a game plan in place, but really it's up to you how you use your time. Yeah, like Jenny said, balancing it all. How you use your time and what to focus on that is going to be effective. I believe in working smart. I don't believe in working hard. And by that, I mean, I don't feel like the dream or the goal should ever be to work really hard for the rest of your life to have something. I believe that there is a season where you need to hustle. There's a season that requires you to work quote unquote harder or longer days. Um, maybe you're, you're trying to wrap up a project you've been working on or you're looking at going to that next level in your business. Yeah, it's not just gonna happen. Um, you know, there's no such thing as luck. There's, there is such a thing as focused effort and discipline, right? So what I wanted to share with you today are three things I do when I know I have to get cracking on something and perhaps I have some free time and um, I'm not sure what to do first. So one of the most important things, point number one I wanna make is when you need to have a very successful day perhaps you have something you've been putting off, your very first priority should be to start off your day doing something that's gonna make you feel awesome and make you feel like a rock star. So this morning, um, I actually have um, a couple hours to myself this afternoon. My kids are away, my husband is working, and I have a couple of key things that I wanna accomplish in order for me to be successful today. And so what I did this morning was I got up, I um, did a nice self-care routine Okay, um, using my oils, I gave myself a little bit of a, a neck rub using my favorite, favorite blend. It's called Aroma Touch. It has one of my favorite oils in it, marjoram. It's very soothing to the skin because I woke up kind of feeling like I didn't have the energy I wanted today to do all I wanted to do. So I gave myself a little neck rub, did my um, you know oil cleansing routine, uh, went downstairs, had a coffee, and then I went to the market and I did a yoga class. And, you know, I could have just kind of hung out in my home and looked at all of the laundry I had to do. And, um, you know, I made a decision in the moment to do something that was going to fill up my cup. I can do the laundry tomorrow when the kids are in a room watching a movie. I can do that with them. I don't need to use my time today doing things that aren't super important. Okay, so I went into the yoga class. I grabbed a smoothie at the market. I picked up some groceries. We have our Canadian Thanksgiving this weekend. So I picked up some healthy local food to cook up on Monday. And then I came home and um, I was feeling awesome. I feel very ready to tackle a couple of key things that I need to do today. So that's my point number one. When, whatever it is you're committing to doing on a day when you need to get some stuff done, 
take care of yourself first, do something that is going to make you feel really good and on fire, and it's probably going to need to involve some form of moving your body. When you put motion into your body, you release endorphins, you release confidence in your body, you, you get excited, you feel awesome, and you're, you're ready to tackle things more. So that's point number one. Point number two is to have a very clear plan around what you need to do today in order to feel successful. So I mentioned that already. And one of the things I do is at night, I review um, my priorities, things that I would like to do the next day, and um, I identify, you know, what are the top three things I need to do, I really need to do, you know? Because how many times, show me some hearts, how many times do you guys make a list, you know, or perhaps you have like a clipboard of like all these random notes of all these things you'd love to do, or maybe commitments that other people have forced on you or, or are expecting of you, and they just don't make, make sense for you in your life and your business right now. So that is a form of um, a lack of self-love, and I've, I've lived in that phase of my life for a long time where I would say yes to way me, too many things, too many people. I would have lists that would be impossible to get through, but it's like I create it almost to sabotage myself. Can you guys relate to that feeling? It's like you're setting yourself up to fail sometimes. So here's productivity tip number two, make it, keep it real, like make a list that is absolutely manageable for you to work through. Don't give yourself more than three um, activities or tasks to do in a day. Um, and if the, whatever you're committing to, make sure they are the most important things. Um, something you may have heard me talk about before is the thought of eating the frog for breakfast. What that simply means is you take now that list of three things what is the one that you're going to, you know, it's maybe is going to suck a little more out of you. You're, you're putting it off. Perhaps you put it off for weeks. That's the one you need to do first. It's going to build momentum. It's going to build a lot of great energy as you move through your other two key, key priorities. And guess what? You may get your three things done and be able to tackle a few more things in your list. That's just bonus. Or you go to the mall. You go celebrate. And that's my point number three. In order to establish action in the future, you need to take time after you complete whatever you're doing today to celebrate, whether that be going and meeting a friend for a coffee or going to the mall, maybe buying yourself a new workout outfit or some new boots or something to just celebrate the fact that you're creating motion and momentum in your life, that you're committing to what's most important. So, okay, I want to recap those three tips for you and then I'm going to give you a quick tour of my home office before I get cracking on um, my top three today. So number one, have a morning routine that fills up your cup, something that's going to make you feel awesome and give you great energy and a great feeling in your body. Something, you know, maybe that means you need to put on some makeup and, and a nice outfit, even if you work at home, something to make you feel, be feel beautiful so that you can go into your day with confidence. Tip number two, have a clear plan. Do not create a list for yourself that has a hundred things on it that you know you're not going to get through. Commit to three things and do the first most hardest thing first, okay? And then number three, celebrate. Take time to acknowledge the, the momentum you're building um, because, you know, Tony Robbins, for example, he talks about how we only ever do things to avoid pain or to increase pleasure. So if you can attach a really good feeling to getting things done because you take time to celebrate when you do, you are way more likely to become a very organized and efficient kind of person and that takes discipline. Okay, you know, the way I run my business today in my life is completely different from how I ran it when I first started. You know, today I, I, I really am an expert with my time. I own my time, and that is one of the great things about owning your own business. However, it can hold you back in the beginning. Do you guys have any questions about productivity before I give you a quick tour of my office and hop off and get some stuff done? Is there anything that you struggle with in determining what's most important. Okay, no questions from the group. So I'm gonna do this um, real quick tour of my office because I get this question actually quite a bit from uh, webinars that I do. People wanna kinda see how I set it up. Um, so the question came in, how do you make time for your kids and your family? Yeah, so here's the first thing, um, and this is a very important question, okay? So the first thing is, 
you have to get rid of that guilt that you are assigning to yourself. Nobody else is going to put that on you unless you let them. Get rid of the guilt um, around times when you are choosing to do things that are important for your business. So what is equally important here is that you are planning your time so that you are feeling fulfilled and that you're spending enough time with your kids and family so that when you're committing to your business, you don't feel guilty. So, you know, I've had times like many of you where I feel like I'm trying to do a webinar or a mentor call, for example, and my kids are calling my name and they're running in another room. And you know what? That's probably bad on me. Like, I, you know, I didn't plan that out properly and they were not set up for me to be able to step away and do the work I needed to do. You have to ask for help sometimes if that means asking your in-laws or your husband to take the kids out for a little bit, um, then do it. But what is important is that when you are with your kids, you know, get off the phone, unplug, spend time with them and be present with them because that is at the end of the day, that's what matters most to them. They don't want to have, they don't want to see mom trying to do a million things all the time and then never feeling they have your attention. You know, one of the things that I want my girls to know as, as they grow up is that I will drop everything if they need me. If there's something that is important, um, I, it's the whole reason I, I love being an entrepreneur because I can be there for those most important things. However, there's a lot of times I'm sure all of us uh, find ourselves just spreading ourselves too thin and trying to do too many things at once. And, and therefore you don't feel like you're accomplished in anything. So be clear with your time, schedule family time, schedule one-on-one -on -one time with your kids and you. Um, but then when you are committed to your business, ask for the help you need to be able to commit fully in what you're doing. Great question. And something I know that we all struggle with from time to time, for sure. I mean, I, I have had my moments where I, I have felt very guilty for, you know, um, being an entrepreneur and having a drive, um, you know, I will, I, th nobody else will put the type of pressure on me that I put on myself to be successful. Nobody. I, I will be successful at whatever I do, um, because I'm very committed and I would not, um, I won't have anything less in my life for myself. However, I don't want that to come at a cost of what's most important to me. And my kids and my husband are the most important people in the world to me. So, you know, personally, I've had to work through that and just, you know, doing better with my, my scheduling and, and saying no to a lot of other things. Any other questions? I'll answer if anyone pops up. I'm going to just flip this around for a second, take you through a little tour of my home office. So, um, this office of mine used to be one of our bedrooms and I've had offices in the basement. I've had offices at the kitchen table. And, and now this is kind of where all my magic happens. Okay. So I'm about to actually record a webinar training for my team today. That's why I've got my webinar notes up on the screen, um, up on the wall here, I've got a set of clipboards and a, a mallet that I'll be launching very soon with tiny devotions there. Um, so on these clipboards, I have various, I'm going to turn the light on. Actually, it's kind of dark in here. On these clipboards, I have, um, you know, my key projects that I'm working on over the next six months. Every topic has a clipboard. As you can see, I just add post-it notes as um, different thought patterns come up. Okay. But these are things I'm getting ready to launch. I build on them. I never launch something quick. Um, you know, I, I certainly take my time with it to make sure that I'm covering off everything I want to. Um, and then I have, um, here's my desk here. So if we move along, I've got a couple of things I just love to have within grasp while I'm working. I've got my little USB salt lamp. I've got a little fan for when it gets hot in the office. I've got my favorite hand lotion, um, Immortelle, which is my favorite beauty blend. I will roll that under my eyes. I actually use it as deodorant sometimes. Lip balm, um, you know, tools that I need to run my business. A little muffin from the market this morning. I always have fresh lemon water. I like to add um, a couple drops of grapefruit to my carafe with some lemon. Um, and, uh, and there's a picture of my dad. So this is one of my favorite pictures. Hi, Ash. This is one of my favorite pictures of me and my dad. Um, those of you that know me, my dad passed away when I was young. And I, I love to keep this picture with me because it reminds me that he's always watching. Um, and there were a lot of prayers that went down and I feel like, uh, a lot of the success that I have today is because of him. Uh, so, and then I have my, so I mentioned that I have my system up here of my key projects I'm working on. Okay. Each clipboard has a project of notes. 
Then what I do is every day I have my clipboard where I keep my top three priorities that I'm doing for that day. So this is like my, my drilled down list, okay? And then over here, I've got a pile of things that do not need my attention right now, but that I will be working through if, you know, the moment presents itself and I'm, I'm able to. So I kind of have these, um, you know, this system where I've got this flow happening, where I've got everything I need um, with me to figure out what my priorities are in a day, okay? Um, and then I have another desk over here. So this is just a little console table that I have with a laptop, um, some things I need to file for taxes, things like that. Um, sometimes if I have one of the girls over to the house that I'm mentoring, every once in a while people will message me and say, hey, I'm in the area, I'd love to pop by. Um, and if it works out with our schedules, they'll come on over and do a little bit of work. Um, or my assistant will grab a spot at the desk there. And then back here, is um, some of my favorite books. I'll show you, I'll highlight a couple of them for you, but you'll notice here. Um, so here I have a little filing cabinet. This is where I keep, um, you know, supplies for sending out essential oil samples to people. It's kind of blurry, eh? There we go. So I've got, you know, I've got all my stuff here that I would send out to people who are wanting to get started with oils, little sampling vials. Um, down here, I have gifts for my team. So I have a very large global wellness team that I love to recognize when they hit new ranks in their business. Um, oh, that's one of my favorite books there, GoPro. If anybody in network marketing, you want to, that's a really great read. Um, so here, yeah, just, you know, my little gift center and um, area where I keep all of my sampling supplies. And then moving along here, um, I always, always have a diffuser going in my office. So today's blend... Um, this is the doTERRA Lotus Diffuser, and um, today, I love this blend actually, sandalwood, clary sage, and bergamot. Beautiful together. I love almost anything diffused with sandalwood. If you haven't tried that, give it a try. Little picture of my kids, which mean the world to me. Um, and then down here, I just have, you know, a variety of affirmations, books that I love. Here's some of my, my more spiritual books on this shelf. Down here are all of my books from Holistic Nutrition School. Um, many books I've read over the years that are, you know, I get uh, flashes of inspiration from as the moments present themselves. And um, little filing system down here, hot pink paper, obviously essential. <laughs> and then here would be probably my stack of most favorite books on leadership and lifestyle. Um, what do I want to call out as some of my top? So I love the desire map. I'm sure a lot of you on here have read this book. I also, whoops, I also spent um, over 10 years of my life working in corporate management for Starbucks. Very, uh, very special time to me. And I love this book by Howard Schultz called Onward. It talks about how he basically came back and, and breathed life into the organization. Um, Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss is a really good read if you're struggling with efficiency in your time. Um, Crush It. This was one of the most meaningful books to me by Gary Vaynerchuk. When he, uh, when he wrote this book, I actually had it as an audiobook first. I used to listen to it every day when I would go for a run. And it is really what encouraged me to, to start Whole Fit, uh, to start my business about six years ago. So I definitely recommend that. GoPro, The Law of Divine Compensation by Marianne Williamson is a great read. Um, and then The Motivation Manifesto by Brendan Burchard is awesome. Oh my gosh, there's just so many. The Four Year Career. This is a fun little read. If anybody is ever wondering, um, you know, why you should go into business to yourself and perhaps why network marketing and why it's not skeevy and you don't need to have this weird spidey sense about it like I did <laughs> years ago, um, that's a really good read. Essentialism, this is one of my most favorite recent books. Um, I read this on a plane um, about three months ago and then I read it again when I got home. I love it for identifying what is the core priorities you need to have to live um, a fulfilling life. And then um, one of my favorite essential oil books is this one, Emotions and Essential Oils. There's a whole world to essential oils um, that people start to dive into as they get going. Speaking of which, I've got um, some of the new products. Doterra just announced the Emotional Aromatherapy Wheel. Love, love, love. I'm going to be doing a webinar on that very soon. And then here's my little, um, <laughs> here's my medicine cabinet. <laughs> just kidding. This is my, you know, actually not kidding, but this is what we use in our home for wellness. So here's all my favorite essential oil bottles. The reason I have it on that display is because I often do 
um, I often do. I've got, you know, that in the background and I'm using it as I'm talking about specific oils during uh, education. So anyway, guess what? I've got to get cracking on three key things I want to get done today. So thanks for joining me for the live scope. I'll stay on for just a couple more minutes in case any of you have any questions at all. That shelf was made for me by, um, by my friends at Miller & Company. They're a local company that do all this great woodwork. My website is wholefit.com, H-O-L-F-I-T.com. Uh, you can check me on there. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, all of the channels. And um, I'm the founder of Whole Fit, uh, holistic nutritionist, personal trainer, and um, successful entrepreneur. So I coach women on how to not only feel empowered in their own healthcare and for their families, but on how to help elevate the world as well. So that's it, that's all. Thanks for joining live. Happy Thanksgiving to all my Canadian friends. You can catch the replay on catch.me. You can look up Whole Fit. Bye you guys.